I see so many beautiful ladies here in church today. I'm not only talking about beauty in the ecstatic way, but beauty that only God can create. But I see so few men here today. Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? Welcome back. I'm so sorry that we didn't record last weekend. We were busy. So, Wednesday is Sydney's eighth grade graduation. So we are out and about. We're gonna go get a little bit of groceries for the week. And, yeah, and um, I don't know if I told you guys this, but I have to park. It's three dollars a day to park where I work, and then I have to walk like six blocks. This is the gospel truth to my job. So yesterday, when I got off work, it did not rain all day. It rained when I got off work. Don't forget, we gotta get an umbrella. I was soaked. I was so wet that when I came home, I had put my sweater. Should I go this way or this way? I had put my sweater on the bed and my husband didn't know. And so he didn't know my sweater was wet. He laid on the bed because he got home and he was tired and the whole front of his pants got wet. I was soaked. And I was like, I mean, it started raining, thundering, lightning when I got off work. And the only thing I could do was embrace it. <laughs> oh, I was like, what am I going to do? So I just walked in. I didn't have no hat or nothing. My wig got soaking wet. My clothes were soaking wet. But we got something for that. We are going to um, this store called Infinity. It's a dollar store. And buy me an umbrella. And then I think I told you guys before that it costs a lot to eat there. So... I'm going to the dollar store and I'm going because they sell chips and stuff for a dollar. I'm going to get me a big bag of chips and some um, lunch bags. And first lady Allen will be toting her lunch. One of my co-workers in three days, she spent $50. $50 on lunch, breakfast and lunch. I ain't got that to do. Like their eggs? I think it was like for a boiled egg. I was hungry one day, so I, I was on an involuntary fast, y'all. So I said, well, let me get an egg because eggs, you guys, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but if you eat a boiled egg in the morning because it's protein, it'll give you energy and it'll, um, okay, it'll give you energy and wake you up. So I was like, I was real sluggish and tired. So I went to go buy an egg, two eggs, $1.99. Well, how much did we buy 24 eggs for? About $1.99? Mm, about $1.87. Huh. So I went home. And boil me some eggs, so don't let me forget. I'm gonna boil me some eggs. I'm gonna have boiled eggs for breakfast. I'm gonna make me some peanut butter and crackers, peanut butter and jelly crackers for breakfast. Cause they say they say that I don't eat. I eat, but you know, I'm not I'm not just throwing money away. I work too hard. I work too hard for my money, and my husband worked too hard for his money. And you know, we put our money together, but I'm not. It just hurts my feelings. I pay one day, I got a tuna sandwich. Okay, let me tell you what's on this tuna sandwich. It was tuna, a little bit of mayonnaise, they put some spinach on top of it. I had rye bread and they gave me mustard and ketchup, $7. I can't do it. So I went to the store and I went and bought me some um, tuna for 79 cents put some mayonnaise on it, <laughs> a little bit of mustard. Um, I had the kind of bread that I like. I'm not doing that. $7. Mm -hmm. Hurt my feelings. Rob you without a gun. Yeah. They doing that because it's the, for the convenience. But if you pack your lunch, if you put your lunch in little lunch trays, that's what I think I'm going to do do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you pack it, then you don't have to get up in the morning rushing. So I'm going to go home and I don't know how many eggs we have. You might have to buy some more eggs. I'm finna boil me a whole bunch of eggs. And um, I ain't doing it. And then I have to pay the park. They do reimburse me like I said. But I don't get reimbursed that day. They reimburse me once a month. So it costs me $15 a week. Because 15. 3 times 5 is 15. 
So fifteen dollars a week times four is what? Sixty? No, fifteen. Yeah. Sixty dollars a month. So I get eighty percent of that back. How much is eighty percent of sixty? guys in a few minutes we get ready to go into the store and see if we can find Sydney um we gotta go to the bank and then go to the store see if we can find Sydney something for graduation all right talk to y'all in a minute bye store and we have saw several cute outfits but Sydney doesn't like any other things that we have picked out so now we're going into a whole, another store and hopefully we can find something the store is nice it seems like you can put the stuff on this side they got cute stuff in here I can put stuff on this side. Okay. That's for the big and bold. I'm just. Red, red. Oh, this dress is cute. This is cute right here. Yeah. What size is that? What size is it? Medium. Mm -mm. Let me go on the other side and see if I can find that. Yeah, I'm coming on this side to see if I can find this exact dress. Because her hips are big. And she don't want to. Let me see the dress. Let me see that. Hold that dress up. This is really... Okay. This is way too hard. I don't find this girl. I don't know. She wants to be over there with the little people. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna go back over here. We're gonna keep looking. We're gonna find her address so we can be done with this. This is just, she making it way too hard for me to find her address. All right, let's go over here and see what we can see. Did you find anything? I don't even know. 
Ooh, don't go with that dress too small. Well, here. Let's take this dress and see if we can find it over there. Where is it? This is cute. Which one is it? It's this one, right? Is this the one you want? Okay, so what we do is we go over here. Go over there and see if you can find it. Right, keep it up in here. Okay, so she's trying to squeeze into the stress. I'm telling you, she makes it so hard. What? Show me. What? What's she? The seat is open. What? What's too short? You, if she wears that, she has to put some leggings on under it. Hold on. My keys got caught. Hold on, y'all. Okay. So, we found her dress. The orange dress. Neither one of those dresses fit? We found her the dress. The orange dress fits. Are you trying on dresses? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mercy, that dress fit. Okay, take the orange one off. So I'll be right back. So I'm standing in front of the fitting room. My husband and I were waiting for Sydney to come out in the clothes that I think is cute. She don't think it's cute. But there's this one red dress. It really looks good on her. So my husband picked out two more. You got the gray one on? Well, let me see. It's $7. I'm not saying that you have to buy it. Just let me see what it looks like. Can I please see what it looks like? She's so irritating, so sickening. Even if it did look cute, she doesn't want it. It's so it irritating. I might want it. I don't want to try it on. Why should I try it on when you can try it on? Let's go. Come on. Whoa. Whoa. All right. We got her dress. She wouldn't try on anything else. Okay. Said, Dad's giving you a receipt. So, let's go. You put the receipt, you have the money back. Huh? You put the receipt, you have the money back. Huh. Now we're leaving the store. <sighs> so, Okay, we parked over here. So now we're getting ready to go pay a telephone bill. I'm so sick of Bill. Me and Bill gonna get a divorce. Cause every time I turn around, Bill is coming to my house. We don't have no personal relationship or anything. I'm just sick of Bill. Over here. Now, here's the I gotta go to one more store, then my husband has to go home and record two shows. Oh, and we still have to go to the grocery store. This is wild. My day. Huh? We over here in the hood, y'all. So if you hear cussing and stuff, that's because of location. Location is everything. All right, everybody, we are finished up with Sydney. She got her stuff. I'm gonna go home and braid her head. And we got, I don't know what these little things are called, but we got something to, um, people got an angry spirit over here. Mm. Yeah, angry for nothing. You know why people are angry most of the time? Because of this. Got no money. 
Well, the, it's decision. You make choices, and you get mad because your choices didn't turn out. Because you did it. Nobody did that but you. So quit being mad at everybody else for what you did. Shoot. That's why I don't like coming over here. But sometimes the hood have the best deals. And sometimes you just have to sacrifice and go to the hood. If you want to get what you want to get. Oh, but um, I pay, I'm getting a new um, wedding ring and band for Mother's Day. I picked it. Um, <laughs> I sent it to my husband while he's at work and was like, guess what you get me? So I'm finna show y'all. I'm finna take him to show him my ring. <sighs> Ethel! Is she turning or going straight? What is she doing? She just ain't got enough sense oh to turn God. the lights on going straight. Really? So, yeah, I'm taking him to go see the ring and then we're going... I don't know why we're going to Walmart. I guess going to Walmart to get me. I'm not sure. But what you going? What, 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 what well, you going? I'm going to the dollar store to get my stuff for my lunch. Okay. You want to go to Walmart and get something to cook dinner for the rest of the week? That's fine. But he can't. You can't do spaghetti again. We cannot. Oh, chili. Chili is good. You want some chili? Let's do chili. Alright guys. Well, I'll see y'all after this commercial break. Boom. Hi. This is Benita Charles of Singing Tips. And you are watching Tuskegee Television Network. Um... Welcome back. I have tried to record this last piece of my show. This is my third time trying to record. I, I came outside because I'm trying to say this right because I know that my peers are going to watch my show. But I am extremely irritated right now. Um, as you guys know that my husband is getting ready to do his bishop tree. And so we've had a little issue where setting up the banquet um, for the first ladies. And so there was a comment made in my collaboration between one of the first ladies and the term that was used was the word ghetto. I'm walking back and forth because it's irritating. I will not come out of character, but I feel like the gloves were taken off when that term was used because I am educated. I don't never throw my education up in no one's face. I don't try to bel belittle people. I don't try to make people f feel or think that they're less than me. I can pull my credentials. I have credentials and I can pull them. And um Matter of fact, every time I go for a job, I have to pull my credentials because people want to see if I'm educated like I said I am, and I am. So for that comment to be made in a conversation to me was, I'm sorry, it was inappropriate and I don't like it and I felt like it was something that did not need to be said, especially amongst first ladies. And I feel like it could have been um, said a, a different way and better way. And my, my whole point is, what are you insinuating when you use that term? We need to be careful how we talk to each other. What do you mean? When you say the word ghetto, are you insinuating that the person that you're talking to is ghetto or what 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 does that mean so I've had to make after talking to my husband I've, I've had to make some decisions about how I address and how I approach people in ministry now because I felt like that was really low and I felt like that word it should have never came up so now since the gloves are off first lady Allen lady elect Allen 
we're, we're going to play by the rules. Because I will not get ghetto. I'm not going to throw big words out there. Because I can. Because I can hurt people with my mouth just by saying stuff in an intellectual way where you don't understand what I'm saying. So I don't want to do that. I want to walk in love and I want to um, be able to get along with everybody. But this right here really took me to another place and this has really challenged me in in ministry and in, and who I am because I was just like taken back all day at work I was thinking about it I was thinking who says that who so I feel like there there needs to be I don't know I feel like there needs to be a conversation that needs to be had and then on the other hand I feel like well maybe this person wasn't taught any better and maybe they think it's okay. Maybe no one told them. Because the very fact that you say that you weren't taught to be that way. And you use that term. Like, everything to every person isn't ghetto. Like, what one person might think is ghetto, another person might not. I think certain venues are ghetto. So there's a certain venue that I'm not going to use. For my husband, he's getting ready to have a, a, a banquet. But I have a level of a, and a standard that I'm going to use because this is the only one and only time that he's going to get this. So I want to make sure that it goes over well. So I could say that the venue that somebody else is using is ghetto. But I, I'm not going to do that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or I could say... Your dress is ghetto. Because I don't like it doesn't mean it's ghetto. I just don't like it. So we were going to have a potluck. So this first lady said we're not going to have a potluck because that's ghetto. Okay, everybody doesn't think that's ghetto. And for people who can't afford it and need to do it, we do potlucks all the time. I've been to um, banquets where there were potluck. I just don't understand. I don't understand. I'm trying to understand. And after this, I'm just going to shut it down. I'm not going to talk about this. Part well, I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to deal with it. You know, I'm going to deal with it. But I'm going to uh, deal with it in the appropriate manner that it needs to be deal with, dealt with. Because um, I, I don't want people talking to me that way. I'm not going to allow it. Um, I'm not. I'm going to. Let me tell you what I did. This this is a problem. This is what happened and this is why it happened. So I am educated. I can pull out my credentials and show what I have and who I am. Most of the women that I deal with, 98% of them are educated. They're getting their BAs or they're getting their masters, masters or doctrine. So... A lot of other women that I deal with, they don't have that, and that's okay. But I have tried to scale back in my vernacular and scale back in some things that I say and things that I do to make other people feel comfortable. But when you come at me like I'm ghetto, or you're saying something that's inappropriate, and I know I can pull back, I can go and pull back who I am, that bothers me. Because I've never tried to make anybody feel that way. So it really bothers me that someone would say that. That even, that they would even pull that up. Where did you find that? Where did you find that word in reference to a banquet? Why would you say that? Because there's people, there's many ways and styles that you can do a banquet and not be ghetto. Do you understand how uncomfortable that someone would feel and that's all they can afford to do and you say it's ghetto really well here's the deal if you're not getting it catered in my opinion versus the, in the context that that was said in then any other way you do it is ghetto 
So if you're not getting it catered, if you're having other people bring in food, that's ghetto. But you wouldn't like someone to say that to you. And I'm just talking to first ladies in general. Don't minimize someone else's opportunity or style or their resources. Don't minimize it because people are doing the best they can. So if you choose not to have a potluck and if you choose to have your caters, it doesn't make the potluck ghetto. But if you're saying a potluck is ghetto, but you're still doing a potluck versus you're not using church people, but you're having other people, your family members to come in and do it, you're still ghetto. The very thing that you said wasn't was ghetto, you're still being ghetto by doing that. That's all I'm saying. Don't downplay other people's opportunity or how they have to get stuff done because it's not right. All right, this is the real first lady. I've taken the gloves off and I'm going to be the authentic me and I am going to tell the truth. This is Lady Allen. See you next week on the real life of the real first lady where it's not ghetto. Have a great one. I see so many beautiful ladies here in church today. I'm not only talking about beauty in the ecstatic way, but beauty that only God can create. But I see so few men here today.